guys, this is Evangelist Anita Fuentes coming to you today with Open Your Eyes People Breaking News. God bless you all my friends. Praise be to God. It's Thursday, July 11th, 2013. What do we have for you today? You know we got some breaking news headlines matching Bible prophecy. Okay, I, I gotta, I'm going to focus on a specific topic today concerning the mark of the beast 666 technology this broadcast is gonna I believe open the eyes of many uh, than they were before because it's gonna let us know how far our society has gone to condition the minds of people not just here in the US but really all around the world nation upon nation is accepting a mark of the beast type technology all right check this out how far are we into the final hour before the day of the Lord is the mark of the beast gonna happen in this last generation let's see what's been happening in our society and around the world want an RFID chip implanted into your hand here's what here's what the do-it-yourself surgery looks like Are you allergic to shellfish? No. <laughs> that wasn't too bad. And just when you think it couldn't be more in your face, let's look at the f This electronic temporary tattoo will soon be tracking your health. Kid Track biometric system keeps track of kids on school buses. Bossier schools get palm scanners for students. Skin electronics for home security? Tiny computer inside your body could treat disease. Biological computer created with human DNA. New biometric cryptology takes us one step closer to a cashless society. Pay Tango lets you pay using your fingertips. Immigration reform could lead to biometric identification cards. Implantable sensors being a benefit to diabetics and others who have health issues. Implantable chips help people lose weight, monitor health and more. How universities are paving the way for the mark of the beast. Hawthorne schools pilot use of palm scanners to speed up lunch lines. Palm scanners to pay for school lunch at Moss Bluff Elementary has parents up in arms calling it the mark of the beast. Palm scanners get thumbs up in schools and hospitals. 
the microchip that will save your memory, science is set to implant devices to preserve experiences into the brains. Google states Motorola's tattoos could replace passwords. Will electronic tattoos replace internet passwords and all other forms of identification? Finally, tattoos that let you control objects with your mind. Three scales insanely tiny arm chip will put the internet of things inside your body. launches pilot for ID with biometric database. After years of delay, petitions and revisions, Israel on Monday launched a controversial biometric identification program. Palestinian authority to launch a biometric database next year. Mandatory national IDs and biometric databases. It says here, mandatory nationwide identification systems have been implemented in a number of countries, including Argentina, Belgium, Colombia, Germany, Italy, Peru, and Spain. He calls us all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has a mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is six, six, six. To think something so small can connect you to everything that matters. When your life and all you love are on the line. Elflink is always with you when every second counts in the emergency room, providing immediate access to your medical records. Because Bob has trouble remembering all his medications. Because I'm in love with my kids' kids. Because my car lost control while driving. Because now I'm looking out for both of us. Because I have diabetes, but it doesn't have me. Because I spend my life in the ER trying to save yours background people saying big brother too much information a little scary mm -hmm. respond to that well you know it's interesting I used to get that question a lot two years ago uh, today we've gotten it a lot less in fact uh, the Attorney General of Mexico and some of his staff have received this chip for security purposes and when the acceptance rate of the product goes up significantly like it has some of the privacy concerns go down but to answer your question directly Lester what most people are concerned with is the invasiveness of this that it goes in your body and as we know with pacemakers and other medical devices, that when people accept it for its applications and for its ability is when it will work its way into society. It won't be tomorrow, it won't be next week, but two, three, five years from now, slowly but surely, it will work its way into the mainstream. Sean Darks, chief executive of CityWatcher.com, didn't want to ask his employees to do anything he wouldn't do. So he had this chip embedded under his skin. The chip has an access code for admittance into a room holding security footage for government agencies and police. For Darks, the tiny chip is a security solution. No IDs for employees to lose. They can't. It's right there in their arm.
those serious legal issues that are raised by this particular technology. Privacy advocates say they're concerned these chips could monitor or track people, medical records could be abused, and a person couldn't remove the chip if they wanted to. The Electronic Privacy Information Center's Mark Rottenberg is concerned that there currently are no rules that regulate or limit how this chip can be used. To suggest that somehow this is not personal information is, is simply misleading. It is very personal information. And less secure. The chips themselves don't contain any... Walmart calls it the latest high-tech way to keep track of its inventory, but others say it could allow the store to spy on people who buy their clothes there. Your money editor John Delano got to the bottom of what this is all about. He joins us live with more, John. Well, Christine, this is a case where there's a bit of truth in both what Walmart says and those who have raised concerns. After reports first surfaced that Walmart was putting an electronic chip in some of its clothing items, the company moved quickly today to allay concerns that they were spying on anybody. But it's clear that Walmart customers are not happy about this latest advance in technology. The Department of Homeland Security wants to cut down on the chances that potential terrorists and illegal immigrants can get their hands on government IDs. Today, Homeland Security Chief Michael Chertoff unveiled plans for new, more secure driver's licenses. It would require some... A new school year and a new piece of technology that has some students worried. The new Canaan, Connecticut school district could soon be trying out electronic tracking technology on students and school property. Students would carry ID cards with radio frequency strips. The cards could track students inside the school, which the company supplying the cards says could be useful in an emergency. The need to quickly identify where they are for their safety and security um, is something that can be done several times a second. Students and parents have mixed reviews. I think it's my business to know where he is and the school's business to a certain extent when he's there. I think uh, they would feel, I don't know, weird about people knowing where they are. The school board still has to approve the program. It would start in the spring and would be voluntary. Noel Waghorn, The Associated. Yeah. So it's RFID chip that they're going to put in everyone. This is what we need to be aware of because that is the culmination of their plan. They want to make human slaves out of us. They want to make uh, mind control slaves out of us. They want people. They want useless eaters. They want automatons. They want to control you by remote control. And this is These liquid bans, uh, random bag checks, as passengers, we've come to expect tight security measures associated with flying. Soon those measures will extend beyond those just taking off to include those who never leave the airport. San Antonio International officials tell KENS 5 Congress is putting into motion measures that will ensure airport employees are subject to stricter security checks. Selena Hernandez joins us live from the airport with a KENS 5 exclusive. Selena? Chris, right now all airport employees must pass a police and FBI background check. Soon, those checks could include something a little more intrusive. At San Antonio International Airport, officials here await the arrival of stricter security measures. Not for passengers, rather airport employees. This would be a huge step as far as the, uh, uh, the amount of background checks that we're going through. This would kind of open it up to a lot of different areas that we don't currently have in place. Members of Congress are currently debating how to keep closer tabs on those who have access to secured areas, meaning everyone from restaurant employees to airline mechanics could soon be subjected to more rigorous background checks. We're just kind of waiting to see what they come up with. It's fairly early in the process. Under discussion, a check of an employee's credit history, search of their bags and property before entering secured areas, and perhaps the most extreme measure, the use of biometric readers for fingerprints and eyes, even possibly a chip implant. An idea we're told more than likely won't fly. Before they ever got to the chip in the hand or anything like that, we feel like they would probably opt for um, a less intrusive way of going about it. Again, those measures are still under... There's liquid bans, uh, random bag checks. As passengers, we've come to expect tight security measures associated with flying. Soon those measures will extend beyond those just taking off to include those who never leave the airport. San Antonio International officials tell KENS 5 Congress is putting into motion measures that will ensure airport employees are subject to stricter security checks. Selena Hernandez joins us live from the airport with a KENS 5 exclusive. Selena? 
Chris, right now all airport employees must pass a police and FBI background check soon. Those checks could include something a little more intrusive. At San Antonio International Airport, officials here await the arrival of stricter security measures. Not for passengers, rather airport employees. This would be a huge step as far as the, uh, uh, the amount of background checks that we're going through. This would kind of open it up to a lot of different areas that we don't currently have in place. Members of Congress are currently debating how to keep closer tabs on those who have access to secured areas, meaning everyone from restaurant employees to airline mechanics could soon be subjected to more rigorous background checks. We're just kind of waiting to see what they come up with. It's fairly early in the process. Under discussion, a check of an employee's credit history, search of their bags and property before entering secured areas, and perhaps the most extreme measure, the use of biometric readers for fingerprints and eyes, even possibly a chip implant. An idea we're told more than likely won't fly. Before they ever got to the chip in the hand or anything like that, we feel like they would probably opt for um, a less intrusive way of going about it. Revelation chapter 13 verse 7 through 10. It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. All who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. He who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He who kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. One. So it could be that one world government, one world religion, one world monetary system, a.k.a. New World Order, this is Bible prophecy, Daniel chapter 7, 23, verse 26, Daniel chapter 8, verse 23 to 26, the book of Revelations, chapter 13, and chapters... Because we see technology that is already being implemented, technology that the Bible refers to as the mark of of the beast is a technology based implementation into the right hand or the forehead. I want to ask you guys a question. How many of you, when you went to church this past Sunday or, or last Wednesday or even this past Saturday, did your pastor talk to you about this? How many of you did uh, maybe your pastor maybe uh, has maybe been teaching on a series concerning how to walk in these last days and how to be prepared concerning the times that this last generation will be going through? Probably not many, if, if at all. If at all. That's unacceptable. Why are ministers and pastors that have platforms all around the world many of them not all of them many of them many is a lot many of them are not preparing their congregation the sheep that's been given to them to care for concerning the times that we're living how come many are blind to what's going on many are being taught and ministered to about worldly things still we're still concerned about uh, what we shall eat, what we shall drink, uh, uh, we're worried about tomorrow, and none of these things we're even to be concerned with. We're to be, we're to seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all those things will be added to us. You know, it makes me angry when I see I <laughs> very little ministers that are really pushing through the grain, pushing pushing in this hour, laboring to bring forth a message that is greatly and urgently needed by the Holy Spirit to be spoken right now in this last hour. It's not about our best life now. It's not about whether we could be of a millionaire status to quote unquote help the church. It's not about seeing if we could get 
two more additional cars to fit our little line of luxury cars in the houses. It's not about uh, making sure that we get promoted at work. It's not about that anymore, folks. It's not about worldly things. It's worldly. It's worldly. But God wants us to be blessed. It has nothing, it says, not the message of this hour, it has nothing to do with the message, the urgent message of the Holy Spirit in this last hour concerning the times that we're living in, concerning the greatest test that the church is going to go through ever, ever. Many in the church are not prepared. They're going to be blindsided. They're going to feel like they got tackled like one of the biggest football plays. They're going to feel like they got a right hook to the jaw like one of the biggest boxing plays. They're not going to know what hit, hit, what, what hit them when this is mandated. Many believe well, the reason why my pastor, the reason why my minister has not spoken about it is because he's already comforted us letting us know, <clears throat> excuse me, he's already comforted us letting us know that we're going to be raptured out of here, Anita. So we don't really need to be prepared for this time because we're not going to be here. The church is not going to be here. Let me tell you something then. And let me tell that pastor something then. They are doing a great disservice and they will be held accountable for every idle word that they have spoken, number one. Number two, they will be held accountable for every person that's going to fall away from their congregation because they're going to believe that lie. Number three, they're going to be held accountable when this falls on them, and they're going to be not only uh, having their sheep led away, but they're going to be led away with the biggest tidal flood wave of deception that ever has, is, or ever will be again, my friends. If your pastor is not teaching you, if your minister is not teaching you the times that we're living in, concerning the days, concerning us being the last generation, concerning what I just showed you, concerning what I just, it, it wasn't hard. This is new information. This is information. What I brought to you was new and information that's already been uh, out for some time as well. It's not hard to research. I, 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 but th th this is urgent. The Holy Spirit is urgent in this final hour to have somebody tell the truth to the church. Get ready. But Anita, we're going to be raptured out of here. My pastor said, and I believe him. I believe him. Listen, my friends. I love you guys so much, but Jesus loves you so much more than I ever could. And the Holy Spirit is confirming the word of the Lord. Jesus made it clear in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, that there will be a last generation that will see all these things, and then he will come. By no means will this generation pass away until all these things come to place. What are all these things? They're listed in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, concerning nation rising up against nation, kingdom against kingdom, pestilences, earthquakes, false prophets, false Christ, rising up, showing signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, the very elect, and the great tribulation. Jesus spoke on the great tribulation, and then he said, after those days, after those days of the great tribulation, this last generation, Jesus said, that seen all these things that I just listed. After those days, the great tribulation, then I will send my angels out into the four corners of the world and gather my elect. This is concerning the times that we're living in. It's not just concerning Israel. And it's not just concerning the church. It's concerning every person that lives on this earth planet in this hour right now right now and when he spoke this word so many years ago over 2,000 years ago he was speaking it to his disciples at that time but he's also speaking it to his disciples in this time those who have an ear let him hear what the spirit is saying and the spirit is urgently calling out Jesus is coming get ready because many are not ready Many are going to fall away because they're going to be offended that Jesus said that he was going to rapture us out of here before the great tribulation. And now I'm in this line either to make a decision to take the mark of the beast or be beheaded. And I'm getting pressured and I don't know how to handle this pressure. I wasn't taught. I wasn't, I, I didn't allow myself to have the Holy Spirit to refine me. My pastor didn't tell me that I, I had to go through this. So I'm not ready. I'm not prepared. And they're going to fall away. They're going to fall away. And it's not necessary. The only way for you and I to be prepared in this final hour, we must surrender our entire lives to Jesus Christ. And we got to stop playing around. We got to stop playing around. 
It's not about playing church. It's not about going to church. It's not about pretending you like church. It's not about going to church every Sunday. It's about uh, surrendering your entire life to Jesus Christ and walking in the narrow way and receiving the baptism, the infilling of the Holy Spirit of the living God and refining fire. Because that is the only way that you and I will be able to stand in the evil day having done all to stand. There is no other way. There is no other way. Your will and my will... It's got to be done by the Spirit of the living God. The Spirit of God is the only one who could put to death the deeds of the body. He could have us walk in the narrow way. He's going to renew our mind so that we will walk in the mind of Christ. He's going to have us to endure to the end according to Jesus' own words so that we shall be saved. He who endureth to the end shall be saved, Jesus said. So many started out good, on fire, whatever you want to call it. They started out well, but they didn't finish well. Many fell away from the faith. Many got bored. Many thought it was a joke. Many thought it was a lie. They bought into deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. There is going to be a great deception that's already sweeping across the scene, my friends. And many already are, they're already lukewarm. <laughs> they're falling into the trap of this uh, uh, agenda, the homosexual agenda, and this uh, uh, cashless society agenda, and this one world government agenda, and the so-called peace and love agenda. Make no mistake about it. Make no mistake about it, my friends. A new world order will come in the platform of love and peace. And when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction shall come upon them as labor pains on a woman. Make no mistake about it. You don't have to fear what you just saw. You can give your fears over to Jesus. That's part of the surrender. You don't have to fear, oh no, this looks scary. I don't know if I'll be able to do it. No, let, let, me, let me tell you something. You won't. I won't. None of us will. Only Jesus in us will be able to. Only the Holy Spirit in us will be able to. We must receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He is our strength, our very present help in a time of trouble. He's our strong tower. It's so easy to prepare the church. It's the working of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit knows who the last generation are, what people comprise of the last generation. He knows you and me. And the Holy Spirit is being quenched from doing his supernatural work in many because people don't want to hear it. <clears throat> people don't want to pay attention to it. It's too scary. He knows that. He knows that there's a false fear, a false scariness that's trying to entrap you and he wants to deliver you from it. He's the only one that can. You, paying, you giving your attention from this broadcast to maybe another television show, your favorite sports channel, is not, it's not going to deliver you. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's not going to deliver you. It's a so-called temporary relief piece. It's a worldly piece, but it's not going to truly deliver you because there's still going to come a time of decision. There, we're entering into the valley of decision. You can be released from your fears. You can be released from the fear of death. You can be released from anything that holds you in bondage right now. There is no other way of escape. Suicide is not the way of escape. People thought it was, and they were horribly surprised when they found out that it wasn't. Jesus is the only escape. People think, oh, well, they're a Christian, and if they, if they commit suicide, they'll still make it to heaven. That's their way out. No, Jesus is the way out. Nothing, no, nothing else is, is a way out. Suicide is not the way out. Whether you're a Christian thinking that, because it's not true. It's not a, Jesus is not giving you those thoughts if you're thinking that. Jesus is the only way out. And we are to be soldiers in Christ, standing firm, doing the work of the Father. Just like regular soldiers that are willing to give their lives for this country. How much more are the soldiers of the kingdom of God? It's not about giving our life for Jesus. Jesus gave his life for us. It's about us not renouncing. It's, not, it's about not renouncing your faith when pressure is on, even to the point of death. For they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. Because Jesus is their life. Not the body, not this life. Jesus is their life. Eternal life is their life. Your life. My life. Those who try to save their life will lose it because there's nothing there. In this life, 
But those who lose their life for Jesus' sake will find it. Because that's true life. I gotta wrap this up. I can so keep going. If I, I gotta say this. If there I know there are pastors who watch this broadcast. I've been honored to get several comments, several emails from pastors, ministers of the gospel. And I praise God, praise God, for the work of the fivefold ministry in this final hour. It is an appointment, it is appointed by the Lord Jesus Christ. However, we must realize that we're going to be held highly accountable for what we minister to the people that the Lord has given us to minister to. And we must not be afraid of losing our tithes losing our congregation, offending anyone, making someone feel uncomfortable because it's going to be a disservice and we're going to be judged. Things have, got, things have got to change. We must fear the Lord. We must fear the Lord more than we fear man. And some of you ministers may need a fresh infilling a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit not because the Holy Spirit isn't working he's always working but because maybe so too much worldliness has come in too much cares of this world has come in and it's kind of quenched the work of the Holy Spirit he's a consuming fire and get the in get the refreshing or the infilling of the Holy Spirit if you have not yet ministers of the gospel and speak you got a platform speak to your congregation uh, the, the, the Holy Spirit even as crazy as this, these headlines are, the times that we're living in is, there's still going to be a comfort and peace when the words are anointed by the Holy Spirit of the living God. And there will be an edification to the body of Christ. And they will rise. They, don't, they will not crouch back in fear. They're going to rise and they're going to take on the challenge of walking the narrow way and take on the challenge of going before the Father and surrendering everything so that they can walk boldly, fearlessly in these last days that even to the point of death even if it came to the point of them right before getting beheaded they're still going to preach that gospel to the one who's about to cut their head off and say Jesus saves you can still get saved right now boom I love you all I gotta go nobody's preaching this nowadays right hey but there's somebody that's preaching it and I'm sure I'm not the only one but praise be to God even if I was all glory goes to the Father I love you guys so very much if you've never even given your life to Jesus Christ you need to email me right now Anita at emoaf.org we gotta start this journey come on we gotta start this journey of full surrender you give your life to Christ Jesus will help you he will help you well, whatever you need help with, and he knows everything that you need help with, let him today. You have to. There's no other way. Anita at emoaf.org. I hope leads you into a prayerful surrender. I love you guys so very much. I got to go. Have a wonderful Thursday. In the name of Jesus, bye-bye. Open Your Eyes, People is an end-time publication broadcast with specific focus on the signs of the times, end of the age, Jesus' is soon return. This is Evangelist Anita Fuentes. Open Your Eyes People brings you the latest in breaking news world headlines matching Bible prophecy. God said in Isaiah chapter 46 verses 9 through 10, He declares the end from the beginning. Are we living in the last days? Is all that is happening been prophesied in the Bible? Are we the last generation? These and many more questions are answered through this spirit-led broadcast. We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us.